So welcome back to this section. We left off uh, right here uh, talking about surveys and other property rights. So let's go back. We were finishing up here about the legal descriptions. And I want you to understand that the problem that we have with this legal description, there is one major problem. This legal description, no matter which picture we look at, understand that it only is in a two-dimensional surface. I told you we've got north and south and east and west. The problem is we do not live in a two-dimensional world. We actually live in a three-dimensional world because I kind of lied to you. Let's go back over here. And I told you in this lot and block method that I had, I built this house on lot two. Well, I actually didn't build the house on lot two. What I built was a condominium building on lot two of Modulin Estates per flat book 42. And there are actually air lots. Remember us talking about air rights of people that live in these areas. And I have to define those heights based upon this datum point that we use. There is a zero line or a datum point right here. They call them datum. Whoop. It is defined by the USGS, the United States Geological Service, and it has a height where zero is sea level. And believe it or not, here's something you can uh, astound your friends with that sea level is actually defined as the median height of the New York Harbor. That's where sea level is zero. So what happens is we have to define this height based upon sea level or zero because this person here actually may live at 20 feet to 30 feet of lot two per plat book 42. And this person here may live at 50 feet to 60 feet of lot two of Modulin Estates per plat book 42. So this is where we take into consideration these datum points or this term called a benchmark. Benchmarks are monuments that are on permanently placed to use datum points because you don't want to really put 5,280 feet above sea level. You want to be able to say, well, it's at zero because Denver, even though it's 5,280 feet above sea level, you certainly don't want your air lot definition to go, well, you know, this person that lives here lives at 3,568 feet to 5,378 feet. That would make no sense, right? That would be confusing if you said, well, that air lot is 3,758 feet to 3,768 feet above sea level. No, you don't, you won't want to do that. So what you would use is some benchmark that is zero and say, well, it's 50 feet to 60 feet above the Mooresville benchmark so that the Mooresville benchmark is now defined at some number. The, the way that I equate it is I could tell you I'm 60 years old. That sounds very old. <laughs> Trust me, okay? Or I could say I'm four years older than my brother. That sounds a lot younger. Now you have to know what the benchmark is of my brother being 56 years old and I'm four years older than that. That's what we're doing here. It's 50 to 60 feet of the Mooresville benchmark on lot two of Platte Book 42, where Mooresville benchmark may be defined at 600 feet above sea level, you know, right around that Greenwood, Indiana kind of benchmark. Okay? So... If you live in a basement, it could be negative, uh, depending on below the benchmark, like in the basement of something. So there are definitely these areas here 
that allow for the measurement of monuments and benchmarks where they are normalized to make the footage look better. Now, the last section I want to talk about is some math section, just so that we can help you out a little bit. Here are three pieces of data that I think is important for you to memorize. It will help you on the exam and it will help you in your career, all right? So the first thing we need to remember is a mile is 5,280 feet. I told you that one section is one square mile and here's a new one, an acre is 43,560 feet. So what I want to do is a couple sample math problems to help us get this straight. These are questions that are on the exam. So let's look at it. I'm going to try and do it this way so it's a lot easier. Let's say a farmer has this farm and he wants to sell the farm. All right, there's his farm. He's got bluegrass. Let's make it green grass. And we know that the farm is 150 feet wide by 700 feet long. So my question to you is, what is the area in acres? In acres. So you guys remember what the area of a rectangle is, right? Base times height. So in this example, it'd be 700 times 150. Let's do 700 times 150. There's the two zeros, that's a zero, that's a five, that's a three, carry the three, that's 10, that's 105,000. What are the units here? It's 150 feet times 700 feet tells us that the area of this piece of land is 105,000 square feet. This logo right here is the architect's version of square feet. So it's 105,000 square feet. That's the area. But the question I asked you was how many acres? So what you actually have to do is now convert that into acres. So 105,000 divided by how many square feet in an acre? 43,560. And the answer to this is, the answer is 2.41 acres. That would be the amount of acres that are in this farmer's property. This is a real world example, all right? It is very common for someone to come to you and go, okay, here's my farm. It's 150 by 700. And my neighbor sold his for $100,000 an acre. I want to match his sales price. All right. So we got to figure the, the amount of square feet. We did that. We got to convert that to acres because he told you he sold it in 100,000 per acre. Well, there's 241, 2.41 acres. You would then multiply that by $100,000 per acre and you get a sale price or a list price in his case of $241,000 would be the list price that your farmer wants to sell the farm at, okay? Let's do another one, a little more tricky. See if I can do this with this. I don't think I can do this. <clears throat> I 
Now I'll tell you why. Let's do it differently. I am going to get a little tricky on you, but I, I want to make sure it looks good. So what you have is this guy's property that looks like this. Where this is 250 feet, this one's 400 feet, and this side of his property is 600 feet long. It's an irregular shape. So the question I've got to you is, how many, what's the area of this property? Make that a little more. So the first thing you have to understand, and I'm showing you this, because this is a trick question on the exam. Is understand what you have is actually two ways to look at this. You've got a rectangle here that is 400 feet by 200 feet. And then we have a triangle And the area of a triangle, remember, look at this. This looks like a rectangle. The area of the rectangle is base times height, but it's only half of that. So the area of a triangle is one half base times height. So the question I ask you is, what is the base length and what is the height? Well, we know the height because it's going to be the same as that over there. 250 and if this property is 40 400 on this side then it's going to be 600 on this side well there's 400 here that's 400 how much would that be that would be 200 so what you actually have is two areas to Add together. So let's figure it out. The area of the rectangle is 400 times 250. There's your two zeros. That's a zero. That's a 20. That's an eight. That's a 10. Plus one half of this one. So it's 250 times 200. times 0.5, because we only want half of that. So it's 25,000 square feet in that triangle. So the total area is that base, is that rectangle, plus the triangle portion, we said was 25,000. So the area that is encompassed by this black square here is 125,000 square feet. Or if this makes you feel better, that's square feet. That's a common. Now we would just convert that into acres by dividing it by 43,560, and you would get the total number. All right, of acres. So that's a trick question where they actually are going to use some kind of weird looking section. The trick and the key to that is understanding that you actually have two parts in here. You've got this section and this section. All right. I want to thank you for stopping in on this chapter. We've got more to go. If you have questions, I want you to email me, Raymond at realuniversity.com. Until the next chapter, I'll talk to you later. Bye.